Bionic Dance is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Some have accused Christian parents of brainwashing their kids. Before children are old enough to digest for themselves all of the evidence for God's existence or various biblical teachings, many Christians ingrain these beliefs into their children. Devout Christian parents regularly and systematically teach their children fundamental Christian teachings without apology. Is this not a form of brainwashing? Is it not forcible indoctrination? Why, yes, that's exactly what it is. And hey, for once he said evidence instead of evidences, so that's something. Let's do this. Bionic Dances YouTube channel. Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Today's debunkery is of the blue sweatered yutz from World Video Bible School who's gonna try to tell us that religious indoctrination of the young isn't brainwashing. As you'll see though, he doesn't have the least clue in the world what brainwashing actually, you know, is. I freely and unashamedly admit that my wife and I instructed our children in the ways of God from the time that they were born. We talked to them about God. We sang to them about Jesus. We read to them from the Holy Spirit's inspired word. And when I was little, I was told that Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy were real. And I believed it. Kids will believe a lot of things adults tell them. But when those things aren't true, nobody should believe them, should they? And if I were to be the most charitable, the most accommodating, I'd say that the assertion a God exists is unproved, at best. But is this really the right thing to do? Is it not arrogant to teach kids that atheists and agnostics are wrong and that theists are right? Should we not let kids decide on their own if they want to believe in God? I do think people should be allowed to believe whatever in heck they like, but you're teaching kids fables before they're able to sort fib from fact. And that, my friend, is brainwashing. Or if I wanted to be charitable, it could be indoctrination. But that doesn't make it much better, does it? The fact is, all parents, even atheistic and agnostic parents, teach their children that certain things are true and certain things are false, that some things are right and other things are wrong, whether they believe in an objective standard or not. And here comes a cascade of false equivalents, comparisons of things which are only superficially similar, but which are not reasonably analogous to each other. Think about it. Can parents teach their children that 2 plus 2 equals 4? Or must they allow their children to learn this for themselves over time? So apparently a math problem and the existence of an invisible super being that created the universe are equivalent. Teaching kids 2 plus 2 equals 4 is the same as claiming God exists. Well, here's one way they're not similar. You can show that 2 plus 2 equals 4. See, if I have two of something, and I have two of the same something in a different place, and I put them together, well, hey, I have four of them. <coughs> we don't learn this by indoctrination or faith, unlike religion. Religion has managed to teach some people that two plus two equals five, or at least they'd believe it if the Bible said so. If somewhere within the Bible, I were to find a passage that said two plus two equals five, I wouldn't question what I'm reading in the Bible. I would believe it. And that, my friends, is brainwashing. Can a mother teach her children that they are not to ever crawl into a freezer and close the door, or must she allow her children to risk suffocation and learn on their own? Oh, by all means, let's teach children about physical dangers. But again, death by fridge versus eternal sky daddy. Do those seem similar to anybody else? Also, I can't remember the last time I saw a refrigerator with a latch. What are you, from the 1950s? In fact, the government passed the Refrigerator Safety Act in 1956 to correct exactly this danger. So unless you're crotch spawn or prowling through junkyards looking for a vintage fridge, I think that this lesson might be a little bit out of date. Can a father forbid his son from touching his guns and knives, or should he just leave them on the floor for the child to discover on his own what he should and should not do with such things. Again, long proved physical danger versus long debunked magical beard fairy. Not exactly equivalent. Can parents teach their children that lying is wrong? 
Or must parents simply allow the children to lie whenever they want and to make up their own minds if lying is wrong for them when they become 18? This, especially Christians, love to declare that something is wrong. They never say why, it's just axiomatically wrong, usually because God says so. So I'll say it. We call something wrong when its effects are detrimental, especially if those being harmed did not give their consent. And there are always exceptions. Situations will come up where enforcing a belief that something is wrong will be unnecessary or will itself be harmful. Believers seem quite resistant to the idea that there isn't a magical rule book in the sky with laws to which we all must adhere, struggle against the idea that we have to make up the rules ourselves based on our opinions, and that our judgment calls could be quite awful for some people and for no good reason. Trying to frame this discussion as a war of axioms is a common tactic of god botherers and it's best to not let them get away with it. Most rational adults would never sanction such foolish parenting. All parents quote-unquote brainwash their children about certain things. He has to put brainwash in quotes because he's not actually talking about brainwashing. Allow me to quote Wikipedia. Brainwashing is said to reduce its subject's ability to think critically or independently, to allow the indoctrination of new, unwanted thoughts and ideas into their minds, as well as to change their attitudes, values, and beliefs. Teaching children basic math skills and gun safety are not the same as telling them they'll be punished by a hidden boogeyman if they don't give him their unwavering loyalty. And I don't know which is worse. A, that he's completely clueless as to why this is a false comparison. Or two, that he knows he's BSing and hopes his audience is too stupid to realize it. Seriously. Which is worse? And the truth is, we're not really talking about brainwashing anyway. It's a lot closer to gaslighting. Though, really, the distinction isn't super helpful since the two are terribly similar. But we also understand that children grow up and ultimately decide for themselves what they want to believe and how they want to act, regardless of past influences. Regardless of past influences, my well-toned and shapely hiney. Go talk to some of the former theists who frequent my channel or who have channels of their own. Talk to the ones with PTSD because of some of the crap that landed on them from religion. Talk to the people who, despite being atheists now, still struggle with the guilt heaped upon them by their religious family and friends who taught them the dogma and doctrine of their faith. Pounding religion into kids' heads at an early age will affect them for the rest of their lives, bias or even prejudice them against ideas that don't fit the narrative with which they were indoctrinated. Nobody is a blank slate at 18. In truth, Christians teaching their children that God exists or that the Bible is God's Word is as logical, truthful, and fundamental as teaching them that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Then make God do this. I can demonstrate that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now do the same with God. Demonstrate his existence. Please, I dare you. If parents can teach their children laws of science, such as the law of causality or the law of biogenesis, then they are implicitly teaching their children that God exists because these laws point to a creator. First of all, biogenesis isn't a law, and the only places I can find anybody saying that are religious. Why is it that so many theists can't get straight the difference between a hypothesis, a theory, and a law? Why are so many of them so consistently scientifically illiterate? It's just weird. And these things only point to a creator when you are a theist. They don't do anything of the sort if you're not already invested in the idea of a god's existence. If parents can teach children that no mere man knows the future, and then read from the Bible dozens of examples of fulfilled prophecies, they have simply taught the fundamental fact that the Bible is a book of supernatural origin. Either that, or it's a book of fairy tales with a rabid and screaming fan club who forgot their following fiction. I mean, think about it. A book written in the Bronze Age makes up a bunch of prophecies, then says they came true. I've got shelves upon shelves of books and movies where the same thing happens. So why should we think the Bible is true? Or if you don't like the fiction comparison, there are tons of religions out there with allegedly fulfilled prophecies. If any are true, why yours and not theirs? And then there is all the retroactive continuity, where a nebulously worded, largely poetic prophecy predicts something vague, then tries to shoehorn in some event that happened later, which kind of sounds close. 
So really, which is more likely? A bunch of humans took a book too seriously, or it's a magic book that tells the future? I'm pretty sure we all know what this guy would say if we asked this question of any book other than the Bible. I often liken evangelists to salespeople, to advertisers. How would you convince a spiritual shopper who doesn't already believe your religion that yours is superior to the other products out there, or to invest in any religion at all? You can talk about the merits of your own church, but remember, other religions religions are saying the same thing. Why yours and not theirs? Why any religion? Christians especially seem to have a very difficult time talking to people who aren't already in their bubble, to people who haven't already accepted their worldview. Their PR staff don't know how to talk to people who haven't already accepted their worldview and axioms, can't deal with people who need convincing, are completely flummoxed by apistivists who don't use faith to come to conclusions. If it is acceptable to teach our kids about reading, writing, and arithmetic, about the laws of science, and about how bad lying and murder are. It most certainly is rational to teach children about the evidence for God's existence and the reliability of His Word. I would very much like to see you try that. Demonstrate the alleged reliability of the Bible and God's existence. But until you can demonstrate it in a testable way instead of expecting blind faith, it should not be taught to children. Math and science can meet that challenge. Your religion can't. After all, we would not even have reading, writing, and arithmetic. The laws of science, truth, and real inherent value of human life without God. Prove it, please. Citation needed. And remember, the Bible is the claim, not the evidence. You can't use it to prove itself true. He's the foundation of every good and true thing. He is true. His Spirit is truth. His Word is truth. Prove it, please. Citation needed. And remember, the Bible is the claim, not the evidence. You can't use it to prove itself true. Nothing is more important to teach children. No, what's most important to teach children is the superiority of Star Wars over Star Trek, she said, knowing full well it'll start a drama fest in the comment section. You're welcome. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, thank. Trying to frame this discussion as a war of axioms is a common tactic of go- Tacnic? Tacnic. Yeah, that was a technicality right there. He has to put- to put- <laughs> Pounding religion into kids' heads as an, as an, as an early age? At an early age. I can bleh. Oh, yuck. Captain's Log. We are investigating an asteroid field where we've had reports of strange signals. So far we've found nothing, but our reconnaissance continues. Captain, unidentified object approaching. Scan object. Hi, scanning object. Captain, the object appears to be bombarding us with Patreon particles. Is there any damage? None. In fact, it seems to be giving us even more strength. Fascinating. It seems that Patreon beams are a benefit to our mission. We must seek out more Patreonic life forms. Block course and prepare to engage Bionic Drive.